Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today we're going to be revisiting and also reviewing the P37X from Gigabyte. We've previously covered the P37. This is a very thin form factor 17 inch gaming laptop. But now the P37X has come out with new upgrades to the hardware. So we'll cover those updates and we'll also do a full review so we can bring you up to speed on what this unit has to offer to help educate you with whether or not this is a laptop you would like to buy. We'll go ahead and start things off with a traditional unboxing to show you what you'll get inside of the box with the laptop. So as you can see, the outside box isn't too large, and so there's not too many extras packed inside. The first thing that we pulled out is going to be the laptop itself. That was protected by a sleeve so that it doesn't get scratched up, and then it has the foam inserts. That protects it from getting crushed and also shock damage during shipping. Outside of that, we have the small black box we pulled out. That contains our AC to DC power adapter. So we have that in place. And the last thing inside the box is going to be a hard drive caddy. It lets you replace your optical drive with a two and a half inch SSD or mechanical hard drive of your choice. Those are going to be all of the findings from inside of the box. And for those curious, here is how much power the power adapter puts out. So the name of the game is Thin and Light, and we have it on the scale to show you how light this is. So the laptop comes in at six pounds and six ounces. Once we add in the power adapter, you're looking at eight pounds and four ounces as your total travel weight. That's a great weight when you take into mind that we're looking at a high-end gaming laptop here and not just an off-the-shelf model from your local brick and mortar store. Now for the other half of the equation of thin and light is going to be how thin is it. So we have a tape measure here to show you that we're looking at about one inch of thickness across the board. As we move forward a few minutes in time, we now have our laptop powered on and open for you. First thing to take a look at is going to be the keyboard. As you can see, it's a low profile chiclet style keyboard. We do have the WSAD keys highlighted to show this is a gaming laptop. And then over on the left hand side, if you haven't seen these before, these are very important. These are our macro keys. So Gigabyte has a piece of software that lets you program those to do any type of features you would like. You can use them as shortcuts to your favorite program. You can program your own custom keystrokes. So they can be used for gaming, but also for productivity as well. So those are really nice to have. Now with a 360 degree spin of the laptop, you'll see very thin when it comes to both the lid and the base of the laptop. And we'll go ahead and zoom in and take a look at our connectivity. On the left hand side we have our Kennington lock port, an RJ45 port for local networking, two USB 2.0 ports, an SD card slot, and over towards the front we have 3.5 millimeter connections for both the headphones and also a microphone. To the front this is where we have our optical drive which is unusual compared to most other laptops where it's on the side. The optical drive can be replaced with the, the included hard drive caddy, so you can put your own SSD or mechanical hard drive in there instead. And right above the optical drive, we have our status LEDs. To the right hand side, we have a mini display port, two USB 3.0 ports, HDMI output, VGA output, and of course the AC-DC port there, so you can charge your battery and run off of mains power. Now we're going to take a quick closer look at the macro keys. If we press the G key, what that does is it cycles through the different slots because you do have five macro keys, but you also have five slots. So that's a combination of 25 keys that you have at your disposal. You can use the software to do pre-programmed events, or of course you can program your own event. Here's a close-up of some of the pre-programmed stuff, so you can see what we have here. Okay, now that we've covered the outside of the laptop, let's cover the inside of the laptop. This is where the major changes have taken place. You can see that we do have the NVIDIA GTX 980 mobile, so we have the top in NVIDIA video card in here. And our CPU has been upgraded to the Core i7-4720HQ. So that's a 2.6 GHz quad-core CPU from Intel for you. Also, our monitor panel is from LG this time around. This is a 1920x1080p screen, so it's full high definition. 
and it's non-glossy, so it's matte type display. It does not reflect all the ambient lighting from around you, making it easier to use in a lot of different environments. So now as we slowly move into the benchmark section, we'll start off with one of our more specialized benchmarks, and that's the noise levels. One thing that's important to keep in the mind when you're having a laptop in a quiet environment, such as a library, is how much noise is it going to make, especially if you're playing a game. So right now we have a benchmark loaded up to put the system under load, and we're seeing how loud the cooling system is. Looking at around 68 decibels right now, that's not bad at all, considering we're running a 3D Mark benchmark. One thing to always keep in mind with our sound test is that these are worst case scenarios, putting the meter right next to the exhaust. As you move away from the source of the noise, it starts to drop off significantly. But this is a good way for you to compare this system against other systems that we've compared with the same benchmark. Now that all the benchmarks have finished running, let's check in with our scores. First here is our thermal information. This is how hot did the system get during those tests. We can see our CPU reached about 96 degrees Celsius max, while down below the GPU did better. It got down to about 74 degrees Celsius. The GPU-Z information is available here for the NVIDIA GTX 980 mobile, in case you would like to check that out. And here's the actual performance score of 10,745 on 3D Mark 11. So the GPU stayed nice and cool and the CPU ran a little bit hotter. Now here is the Fire Strike benchmark score. We got 8,307 and this shows a much more detailed graph of information. So if you want to see exactly how hot the system was and when, those graphs offer that information to you. Scores look more or less the same as far as thermal information, 96 degrees Celsius on the CPU and the GPU at 74 degrees Celsius. Now we're moving into another sound level check and this is going to be speaker sound levels. So now we're looking at the last part of the laptop and also the last part of our review, and that's going to be the disassembly. You can see on the bottom half here, we have a single screw access to the center area. This lets us get to our system RAM, but you'll have to take out all the screws along the perimeter if you want to do a more fully fledged disassembly. Releasing the optical drive is very easy, and that will let you quickly swap in a two and a half inch disc of your choice if you'd like to have extra storage, and the caddy to do that is included with the laptop. As far as the rest, we have to remove all of the screws and that's going to let us take off our bottom panel. Now here is a first glance of the internals of the laptop. We'll see we have our battery on the bottom left hand side. 
Then near the opposite corner, the bottom right hand side has our two and a half inch mechanical drive. That's a one terabyte drive to help cover any kind of mass storage needs you have. You'll see speakers in the front left and right hand side. So we have speakers in the front. Up above the battery, we have our SSDs. We have two of them right now in RAID 0. In the center, we have our system RAM. Currently, we're equipped with 16 gigabytes of system RAM. In between the RAM and the SSDs, this is where you're going to find your Bluetooth 4.0 card and your wireless access card. System cooling fans, top right and left sides. We see we have two heat pipes connecting those. While one fan is primarily responsible for cooling the CPU and the other the GPU, they are interconnected with the heat pipes, so they do share the load to some extent. So that pretty much covers the high level overview of the system disassembly and also completes our full review of the P37X. We hope you enjoyed the review and that you found it entertaining and educational and it was able to answer any questions you had about the laptop. Of course, if you have more questions yet, feel free to contact us by phone or email and we'll always be happy to help you out and get those questions answered. If you're just seeking additional information about the laptop, such as the full system specifications or the current pricing and availability, then just visit our website gentechpc.com and we do have all that information available. So we just want to remind you once again, this was Gentech PC and we'll see you next time.